Well, hello everyone and welcome to Locked On Flames. We have officially made it to the halfway point of the season. Let's find out who's hot and who's not. <laughs> Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to Locked On Flames. I'm Jess Belmosto of the Metropolitan Riveters public relations team, and I've been uh, covering the league for different blogs for uh quite a number of year now, years now, we're on uh, five or six. And uh, how are you today? It's absolutely freezing here. Uh, we're expecting 11 inches of snow. So, you know, I'm sure you Calgarians are uh, laughing at that. But thank you so much for making Lockdown Flames your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts. And we are free 99 wherever you get us, but especially on YouTube. And make sure that you are subscribed, hit the notification bell, and make sure you have all clicked and not personalized. We do not have a flame of the day today because I just don't feel like lighting a candle. So <laughs> next time uh, for tomorrow's show, we will most definitely have a candle going. Yesterday's was Island Margarita. And, you know, after working in a candle store all day with those scents, sometimes you just like to come home and smell nothing. <laughs> so we know the Flames had a hot start to the season and players cranked up the heat to make that happen. But who made it happen? And without a, without a doubt, Johnny Gaudreau is number one on the list. He has been absolutely stellar. He's on pace for 104 points, 60-ish goals, and he has truly found his game on that top line. I think that he is done playing down to his line mates. And, you know, that's not a knock to Sean Monaghan, especially because he has been dealing with injuries pretty much since he signed that big contract back in, what, 2014? So, you know, it's just um, he, he's finally on a line with – people who are equally as talented as him and it's great to see he has evolved his game so far this season and he is just really like blossoming again it's uh, like a second wave of puberty if you will you know players enter 27 28 uh years old and they just kind of get like this this prime era so you know there's there's still plenty of Johnny hockey left to be played and I just think that this elite level is something we're gonna see for quite some time and you know I I lead the show off with him because it's a it's a very obvious choice but because I think that people are still kind of overlooking him as a Flames player and are just kind of expecting him to leave and I don't I don't think we should you know be betting on that just yet Next up, and again, these are in no particular order, and uh, these are just kind of the ones that I came up with right away, but Matthew Kachuk, 20 goals and 25 assists. Okay, so he is he's there. When plays are happening, he is there, and I think that people are, again, overlooking him because he has slowed down the shenanigans. He's stopped the unnecessary penalties. He has... Uh, matured, if you will, <laughs> and has kind of come into this uh, mellowed out stage at 20, was he 24? <laughs> and he's calm, he's cool, he's collected. For the most part, you know, uh, you don't see him getting pucks flipped at him by Jake Muzzin or <laughs> opponents anymore. So it's uh, nice to see that. And if there had to be one word to describe his season, it would be intentional. I think that he has truly learned to rein it in and it be more intentional about playmaking. Like the deflection off of him from Gaudreau 
Like he made sure that happened <laughs> so he could get the goal. And it's very nice to see that from Kachuk because I truthfully didn't think we would see a time where he would be settled down for a few years. But I, again, I think he's just become a more intentional player. And I really hope that his second half of the season is just as good as this one. Chris Tanev, you know, I feel like defensemen are easily left off of these lists because they are not racking up points. But yes, Chris Tanev is coming off of a four point night last night, but he is still having a stellar season. You know, I think that he's averaging about 20, 21 minutes a night and he's playing great hockey with Oliver Shillington. Oliver Shillington is someone that <laughs> Flames player or Flames fans rather were looking to trade, not because he was bad or taking up a roster spot, quite the opposite. Actually, I think it was just there wasn't really room for him at the time and they couldn't quite um, play him the way that he should have been playing at his age because he's like 24, 25 years old himself. And someone by that age is usually a staple on the roster, but the flames haven't had much roster turnover, um, you know, with Gio leaving and then uh, Valimaki being sent down, created an opportunity for him to start playing with Chris Tanev. And I remember last year, Chris Tanev spent some extra time, with the younger defensemen out on the ice and just real captain material. And I think that he has just been playing really well. I think that he is one, he's, you know, he's, he has one career fight and I, I got chewed out for calling him a tough guy on Twitter, but just because like you call somebody a tough guy does, that doesn't mean that they're like, going to like hit you head on or whatever, like throw a punch at you, you know? To me, a tough guy is someone that's a tough guy to play against. And if you go down the in the corners with him, you, it's not pretty, you know? He is a very physical defenseman and there's nothing wrong with it. Like that's what makes him a tough guy, not him like having one career fight. <laughs> like I, I don't know. I just, I think that he's, has really uh, stepped up into a great role. It was a great free agent signing for the Flames last year. Blake Coleman, another player with a four-point night with two goals against Arizona in the 4-2 win over the Arizona Coyotes. These last few weeks have been uh, very different for uh, Coleman because not that he was struggling. Like I don't want to. I I don't want people to think like I thought he like wasn't playing good hockey or wasn't. I don't know. Just like he stunk or something. But I think that he has kind of proved that he's worth the money that we're paying him. Uh, these past few weeks, and he is someone who is obviously very dedicated to the game. And he, he uses social media a lot, which is why I like it, because it gives me an insight to what's going on. And uh, he lost his grandmother last week or the week. Yeah, last week. And he has been playing very well since then. And he posted something saying, like, Rhea had the best seat in the house. And it was he had another two goals that night. So, you know, I just I think that. He is making himself comfortable on that second line and really becoming a staple to this Flames roster. It's great to watch. And coming up next, we are going to uh, talk. We're going to continue this discussion because the Flames roster is just that good. We finally have more than three guys to praise. So, uh, you know, good. I can stretch this into two segments. So, Yes, coming up next, we will continue our uh, who's hot list. But first, let's take a break with Built Bar. 
Built Bar is a delicious tasting protein bar that everyone needs to get them through their busy days. I keep one in my backpack because when I'm on campus, I'm not paying $11 for a sandwich just so I can be hungry in another 20 minutes. Built Bar is a 100% uh, covered in chocolate protein bar, about 130 calories in every bar, high in protein, high in fiber, low in fat, low in carbs, low in sugar. It's, it's good for you. It's, I don't know how else I can sell it to you. They're covered in chocolate. They have a wide variety of flavors and they are just absolutely delicious. They're fuel for your, for your day and fuel for your brain. So you can't ask for too much more than that. But uh, head on over to Built.com today and use promo code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5, for your 15% discount on your next purchase. Locked on Flames continues. Let's keep the conversation going on Twitter. Uh, tweet at me, follow me, at Jess Belmosto. And if you're watching on YouTube, it should be on the screen. Milan Lucic. We have this one-sided beef. I don't know what I did, but you know what? Everyone tell him on Twitter to unblock me and use this clip of this segment <laughs> to send to him to let him know that I do think he is still a very good hockey player, but he has, he had a real hot streak going at one point in the season and it became very clear <laughs> who won the James Neal and Milan Lucic trade because, <laughs> you know, at the time, James Neal was being placed on waivers and Lucci just like going on like an offensive tear, but he could get anything by goalies. And for like four or five games in a row, he was only going five hole. He was only shooting five hole and none of the goalies could read that. Uh, <laughs> everyone but the goalies were reading that. And now he's slid back down in the lineup but he's holding that bottom six together and he's really helped keep the flames alive in quite a few games. And uh, specifically the game against Dallas. His, so it was the Rizicka, Lucic and Trevor Lewis line. I believe I think it was Trevor Lewis that was on that line uh, ended up having like strong defense that allowed the flames to obviously not allow another goal, but was able to generate some turnovers to get the Flames back into possession. So you love to see that. And, you know, another player is Andrew Mangiapane. You, if there is ever a time where I am not praising Andrew Mangiapane, that is probably a cry for help because this guy is just, he's something else. And if you are a day one listener, number one, I'm sorry for how, bad the show was back then <laughs> but you know that the one player that I have had faith in is Andrew Mangiapane he I there was just something about him that I was like this this is him there's this player is gonna be the one and I was right he set himself a new career high goal with a career high record career high number of goals words are hard today, I guess, <laughs> and with 20 goals. And he continues to prove that he was made for top six hockey. I wrote an article about how I thought he was ready to make that jump and how he solidified himself as a top six player. And people were, no, no, he's not there yet. There's, there's no room for him. Well, guess where he is now, haters? Guess where? That's right. On the second line. <laughs> uh, I just, I think that he, I don't know if he would have made the Olympic roster, <laughs> but I think that he, you know, I think that the women's, the women's Canadian team had a taxi squad. So I'm sure that he would have made the taxi squad for, uh, you know, the men's tournament. So, you know, I think that he is truly going to earn himself some money this next contract, and you just love to see it. This next one might be a surprise to you because I don't think that um, 
a lot of people <laughs> have really paid attention to him, and that's Rasmus Anderson. And I don't mean any disrespect by this, but I say this as he is coming from, uh, like, he's not, like, red, red hot, but he has been good, and he has played well defensively that he deserves credit. And last season he struggled, and he's playing better hockey this year. Last season, I gave him a break because he was a new dad, and I'm sure that that's exhausting, and playing a very condensed schedule on top of probably not getting a lot of sleep cannot be good. And he's seen change this season as well, you know. Uh, it took him quite a while to get that first goal of the season, but the monkey's off his back, and he has 21 points. You know, 20 assists is still impressive for a defenseman, in my opinion, okay? That's just my opinion. But uh, <laughs> I, I think that he has grown a lot considering he, it, he moved on from his first D partner that, um, you know, Mark Giordano is – in Seattle now. We don't know if he'll be there for the end of the season. Imagine trading away your franchise, like your first captain. Like what? Then what? But I just I think that he has come a long way, and it's not necessarily, you know, maybe where Chris Tanev is, but he's still young. He's still him and Noah Hannafin are the same age, and they're both playing good hockey, <laughs> and. uh just put some respect on their name, okay? <laughs> Oliver Shillington, I talked about him earlier, but he has finally made the roster. He has finally proven himself worthy of a spot. And he is just, he's there. And he he had, uh, what was it? I think it was five goals in like six games or something crazy like that. And he's doing great. I, I'm not going to lie. I, I really like watching him play. I think that he's a good fit on Tanev's pair. I think that they are very compatible. I like what I see there, and it's hard not to be excited to see what that could grow into. Uh, and to close out this segment, we're going <laughs> to... We're going to talk about Jacob Markstrom because he, you know, he is, again, one of the players that we typically praise on this show. And he's earned seven shutouts this season, two in a week. <laughs> and he just continues to blow everyone's mind. And he, he can't be stopped. Uh, well, he can, but we're just not going to speak that into existence. And... I think that this there's something very special about Jacob Markstrom. And I'm bummed that we uh, didn't potentially get uh, David Krejci and Jacob Markstrom on the same Olympic team. But I, I, I'll i be okay. It's fine. I'll survive. But, you know, I think it's just awesome to really have a goaltender that you can rely on and that you can count on. Uh, there are times where it gets a little hairy, but he has this way of bouncing back. It's just like a bouncy ball, like a boomerang, you know, it goes out there, but it comes back. And there's very little uh, questioning to his talent. You know, he is very talented, obviously. He's very... I, I don't even know what the word is like nimble and flexible doesn't like those aren't the right words but he's very he's very quick he's able to read there were there's only been one game where he had issues tracking the puck and that was the game against Boston I believe and he just he struggled he struggled big time so you know you'll have to see what the second half of the season holds for him especially as we were getting to the possibly uh see <laughs> some signs of injury and fatigue but that I think that he he's earned a spot on the hot list and coming up next we will be talking about the have-nots of the team so 
Before we do that, though, we must talk about rockauto.com. RockAuto.com is an amazing family-owned business, and they choose and operate to save you time and money when you use Rock Auto. Why would you spend 30 50 to even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car detail dealership? Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Rock Auto prices are reliably low for every customer. Doesn't matter how long you've been doing your car work, if you're brand new or if you're a seasoned mechanic, Rock Auto can help you. They have everything you could need from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oils, and even new carpet. We encourage you to discover your own car parts and needs. And, you know, I know what I need. I know I will happily be placing an order for some new tail lamps and probably new windshield wipers because mine I don't know what it is but mine are always falling off and breaking so (laughs) head on over to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for you your car or your truck and all you have to do is write locked on in their how did you hear about us box so they know that we sent you amazing selection reliably low prices all the parts your car will ever need rockauto.com Oh, yes, now it's time to talk about the have-nots. And hopefully these players have a second better half because I don't like being negative. But anytime I get a chance to dunk on Brett Ritchie, just let me... Do you want to know how many points he has in 28 games? Zero, that's right. And people are... Finally waking up and seeing how useless he is on this roster. I knew he was going to be useless from the second he signed the PTO to last year to when they signed him and then when they re-signed him in free agency. I was not having any of it. But um, you know what? He sucks. I'm just going to say it. I'm sorry. I, I don't like dogging on anyone. I think it's you know kind of unfair. But you know what? Brett Ritchie sucks and it's time for him to see time in the AHL or call it quits because he is not effective <laughs> on the on an NHL roster. I don't know any roster in this league that would be like upgraded <laughs> with Brett Ritchie on that team. Like I don't see anyone going, you know what we need? Brett Ritchie. Like like there's not a need for him. I'm sorry. And that feels so mean to say, but he is just, he's past his time. Not everyone has a long, successful NHL career. There have to be some duds in there, and that dud is Brett Ritchie. Okay? Thank you. Next. Um, Tyler Pitlick, zero points in 25 games. And you know what? He has spent some time injured. Can't blame him for that. Injuries are out of your control. And he is just like Brett Ritchie in the sense of, what does he bring? This, he brings the same amount of value as points he holds. Zero. And I, there are so many players on this roster that would be served better in the AHL and prospects should be swapped, like trading spaces, so uh, the, they can finally start getting some NHL time. Because... Flames have quite a bit of talented players, and same thing with Brad Richardson. You know, like, there are so many (laughs) players that uh, should just be placed on waivers, sent down, and just, again, trading spaces with prospects. Uh, Brad Richardson has been scratched recently, and again, he's earned that. Four points in 24 games. That's unacceptable. I get that he's an older player. He's also married to um, one of the, I think it's him. It's either him or Trevor Lewis. I think it's Brad Richardson, though. Um, He's married to Jessica Shore from Gossip Girl. I had no idea. (laughs) But, you know, he was brought on as a depth player. But that's a roster spot being taken away from a stronger player and potentially a prospect who's ready to make that jump. To the big leagues. I don't hold it against 
Brad Richardson, Tyler Pitlick. Brad Richie, you are on a PTO and you could have said I'm all set. Thank you. Uh, for holding, like taking up that roster spot because, you know, coach and front office saw what they had to offer and thought it would translate well. It did not. And that's unfortunate. You know, I just, I think that there just comes a time when you have to admit it's okay to move on. And I would just like the Flames to move on from them uh, in the second half of the season. Dan Vladar. This this one hurts to talk about because he he has struggled. Outside of the month of November, he's just not been a good goalie. In November, him and uh, Markstrom were the hottest tandem in hockey. It was it just did not get better than them. Um <laughs> I but I say that as if he doesn't have a 2.6 goals against average and a 911 save percentage. And like those those are decent numbers, you know. I think anything above a, like a 28 is a problem and then obviously anything below like 910 is an issue. Um <laughs> the Carolina Florida road trip just left such a sour taste in my mouth that I don't know if he starts for quite some time. And you know, he sent Daryl Sutter sent a message to Markstrom the other night in Dallas when he yanked Marky and put in Vladar. Vladar technically had a shutout, I guess. But um it just was not good. It just was not a good game experience. I mean, okay, I shouldn't say that, but it's just it has not been the Vladar that from November and I thought that we would maybe see that carry over now do I fault him for that no do I think that it's maybe an issue with him getting a lot of reps yes and who do I blame for that Daryl Sutter and maybe Jacob Markstrom if he feels like he can't trust his backup goaltender I don't know but I think that there are just too many variables that don't really go into Vladar having like a successful first half. I don't think that it's all on him. I don't think that it's all to blame on coaching and management and his starting goalie. But I I really do think <laughs> the four players we talked about here, I think that those uh, that Dan Vladar is more likely to have a successful second half than the other names. So thank you all so much for tuning in to today's episode of Lockdown Flames. It's always a pleasure chatting with you. Uh, you can get the show wherever you get your podcasts and make sure that you follow me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. And we are also on YouTube, so don't forget. And uh, leave the show a five-star rating and review. I would appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you all so much. And I will chat with you tomorrow as we go over our winners and losers of the week.